Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the neutral comet assay or comet assay for short. Very briefly, the comet assay is going to be allowing us to identify whether the compound, for example, that we have is uh, actually leading to any um, complications within our DNA. So it is going to be allowing us to test the toxicity of the compound that we are working with. So um, in order to allow us to understand how this um, assay works and an idea of how we can analyze the data that we have, I'm going to be briefly going over, first of all, a a protocol, a generalized protocol, and then and going over the steps to allow us to understand why we do each step. And finally, uh, a, a sample uh, data to see how the results look like. First of all, starting with our cells of interest. So we're going to be taking our cells and then mixing them with agarose and then placing them on a slide. Now, this is going to be important for a few things. And firstly, uh, when we place our cells onto this agarose, this serves into for two things. Number one, it allows us to spread the cells. So then when we visualize them, we can actually see whether the DNA in each individual cell is either not damaged or damaged. And based on that, we can analyze it. Number two, when we place these cells on an agarose, it is going to be allowing us, well, when the agarose solidifies, it is going to be allowing us to immobilize the DNA or immobilize the cells in this case. After we place and immobilize the cells, the agarose, um, as I said, is going to be immobilizing the cells in place. And this is then going to be followed. Of course, if we want to have a look at the DNA, then we're going to be lysing the cells. This is going to be then followed by the addition of an alkaline solution. Now, this alkaline solution is very important because it is going to be, well, we, as we know, DNA is double-stranded. And what we want to do is separate these strands into two single strands. This is the purpose of the alkaline solution. After that, we're going to be running uh, an electrophoresis gel and uh, actually just run a, an electrophoresis. I'm not going to get into the details of gel electrophoresis because um, I would assume, first of all, many of you might know that. And if you don't, uh, there's going to be a video hopefully soon on this channel uh, going into the details regarding this technique. Then this is going to be followed by um, staining the cells. So basically what we want next to do is to, if you want to visualize the cells, we need some sort of um, fluorescence marker, for example. And here we're going to be using uh, an example uh, as a cyber green, which is an intercalating agent. Quickly, intercalating agents are going to be as uh, shown here in uh, this um, uh, well uh, description, we can see that they are present between uh, the uh, bet and the phosphate groups uh, between the nucleotides in these strands. So as we can see here in green. Next. Uh, this is going to be allowing us to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to visualize and then based on the visualizations to quantify the DNA damage in individual cells. So the question how becomes, well, how can I do that? So, um, so in this very um, interesting small scheme that I have over here, we're going to be having basically two different uh, sorts of cells that we're going to be having in our data. The first of which is going to be a normal cell. And the normal cell, as you can expect, the DNA, since what, what I mean by normal cell, these cells, the, the single strands are not damaged, they're not broken in a way, and therefore the cells are going to be present in a spherical round uh, shape. However, when our cells are damaged due to the compound that we have added and we want to well assess its toxicity, the cells are going to look like a comet, which brings us back to the name of the technique in the first place, right? So it's going to be looking as such. And so there we go. So it's going to be looking as such where we have a uh, the central area of the cell and then we're going to be having a small tail that is going to be following it. And here, as we can see, we can see the, uh, the single strands and then we're going to be having, of course, the intercalating agents, for example, in our case here, the cyber green that is going to be present between the DNA. And also we're going to be having since I mentioned previously that the compounds that we're going to be using are potentially 
toxic, then this is going to be inducing nicks, or in other words, breakages inside our DNA, leading to the presence of small fragments of DNA. And these small fragments of DNA, when we run the gel on electro by electrophoresis, they're going to be, um, let's just say, forming the tail. And this is why we actually have this particular shape. And uh, then we can actually, due to the intensity, uh, we can analyze the, the 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 percentage, or I can how can I say this in a in a, in a different way? Uh, we can analyze the um, toxicity levels, or to what extent this cell has been damaged by the amount of fluorescence that we see at the tail. So, for example, if we have two cells, and in one cell we have well. Um, a little amount of uh, fluorescence, relatively speaking. And in the second cell, we've got a an intense green, uh, if we use cyber green, an intense green fluorescence. Then we can actually say that the damage that this cell has induced, uh, was induced uh, by this compound is much higher than that of the other cell. So with that, uh, we can wrap up this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comment section below.